Hello, my name is Rebecca Ward and I'm a violin teacher and chamber music instructor at the South Pasadena Arts and Music Academy. I thought today we could get to know the violin a little bit. Let's get started. Uh, my violin is made of two different parts. There's the violin and then there's the bow. Let's talk about the bow first. My bow has four main parts, the tip, the stick, the hair, which is made out of horse hair. And this is where it's handy to remember that we're talking about 400 year old technology. I'll talk more about why we use horse hair later, but it is taken from a horse's tail even today. Uh, and then there's the part where I hold the bow down here and that's called the frog. It's called the frog in lots of different languages. I promise that really is the name of this part of the bow. There's a very specific way that we hold the bow with my thumb, inside the bow here, my index finger curled on its side, these two fingers hanging over the side of the bow, and my pinky up on its tip. A lot of the bow functions the same way a seesaw does, uh, the fulcrum being right here. We'll talk more about how we use that on the violin in just a moment. My violin begins with the scroll up here, which houses the tuning pegs that lets me adjust the tension of my strings. Beneath the strings is my fingerboard, which creates resistance uh, when I put my put my put the when I put my fingers down. Above that are the strings, and there are four of them on a violin. Down here, the lowest string is the G string. A little higher than that is the D string. A little higher than that is the A string. And then way up on top, my highest string is the E string. My strings are suspended over the fingerboard by my bridge, that's this piece right here, and they're held in place by the tailpiece. Uh, this piece right here is my chin rest, I bet you can guess what I put in there, my chin, uh, and on the back is my shoulder rest, and that makes it much more comfortable to play. This line traces the contour of my shoulder and gives me a lot more support while I'm playing. When I hold the violin, I put it up, on my shoulder, like this. I put my chin in the chin rest, and that's what holds up the violin, not my hands. My arm is gonna be busy doing lots of other things and doesn't have to, the, the energy to be holding up a violin. All of that is happening in my chin and my neck and my shoulder. Now, let's talk about the strings just a little bit. Right now, and I will use my bow for this, when I play, let's say my A string, that string begins right here where it touches the scroll and ends right here where it touches the bridge. Right now that string is this long. When it's this long and tuned correctly, I get an A. It's when I put my fingers down and use them to effectively shorten the string that I can make the sound higher and lower. I just put my first finger down, so now the string goes from here to here. I've shortened it by about an inch. And you can hear that the pitch rises, and I can keep going up. And I can do that on all four strings. And that's one of the reasons why we have such a large range on the violin. It actually mimics the human voice in a lot of ways. Um, and, I, and I change that, like I said, by making, putting my fingers down on their tips, shortening the string, and, and making the string higher and lower, depending on where I place my fingers on the fingerboard. Let's talk about how it actually makes sound. I mentioned before that this was horsehair. It's horsehair because horsehair is coarse. Unlike our hair, which is smooth, horsehair is coarse and barbed. And we rub a substance on the violin called rosin. Rosin is purified tree sap uh, that we boil and purify and bake into little cakes. Again, remember, 400-year-old technology that we're still using. And it's sticky, and you rub it on the bow hair, and that makes the bow hair sticky. And all of those little barbs, all of those 
coarse parts of the hair act like little tiny fingers that are grabbing the string and causing it to vibrate. When the string vibrates, those vibrations travel down the bridge into the hollow body of the instrument where they resonate. The violin is its own resonating chamber and then the sound comes out of these two openings right here which sort of look like fancy F's and in fact are called F holes. Uh, so again, you can see that string vibrate as I use the bow. Now it's exceptionally important that my bow is what we call straight and that means that my bow is parallel between the bridge and the fingerboard. If I do that, I can get really good clean vibrations from the string. If, on the other hand, my bow is crooked, not parallel between the bridge and the fingerboard, the, the whole system breaks down. The little barbs can't catch the string, so the string can't vibrate, so it can't resonate inside the chamber, and what you end up with is a sound that sounds like this. You see what I mean? Now, when I'm using my bow, I have options. I can use really long, sustained bows. Or I can use really short bows that even bounce on the string a little bit. And I can do everything in between. Uh, one of the real joys of playing the violin is how many different articulations we can, we can use um, that mimic all sorts of different sounds. So now I'll play a little something and see if you can hear all of the different articulations and ways that I'm using my bow, as well as all of the different notes that you're hearing and all that comes together to create this. Thanks so much for watching today. Uh, if you liked this, please hit like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Feel free to leave comments and let us know other videos you'd like to see. What can we tell you about music? Thanks so much. Thank you for watching.